Is this isolation is built on one, it's like it's one, the same layer, the same depth, and it's after the stone was machined. Mm -hmm. I'd say it's after it's been machined. Yeah. Then it's the, the weathering just... And a lot of pressure can also yeah, do that. Yeah, to see that. I mean, pop it off. it feels a little stronger, you could probably pull it off just Yeah, yeah, I know. So that's, that's how many of the after. items loses that surface. But you can also find it in a carving. Can this be happening by weathering? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Over what kind of period of time? Oh, thousands and thousands of years. Thousands go, and thousands there of go. years. There you go. So here clearly we can see the difference of different types of quarrying, different types of tool marks. The inscriptions on the top are 19th dynasty. It's Ramses II. This is a metal chisel mark. So this comes from that time period. However, Chris Dunn, Hakim was the first to point this out, and Chris Dunn agreed. Look at these score marks. Look at these score marks. All over score marks. Diamond tools. This was where well, they originally cut the stone. This here is the quarried stone. That these were blocks they were going to use. And then they use, as Chris says, a facing tool to even it out with diamond tips. And this is the marks. Hakim pointed this out clearly as diamond tool marks. And geologists, we'll have our geologists come. They've agreed. So this is the actual quarry where the second pyramid, that one, some of its uh, blocks came from here. The question is how were those blocks removed from this solid wall? What kind of technology was involved? A bunch of slaves hacking away? Um, Are those hand tool marks or machine marks? And what about this thing? It never. Okay, so this is how it, they say they did it with copper chisels and they're cutting granite. And come along a person like Chris Dunn says copper does not cut. Granted, cannot do it. Chris Dunn does demonstrations. I was once on a, a closed circuit TV uh, special with Chris, 1997, where he takes a small piece of granite. He can't do it anymore because he can't go through the airports with his chisel. And, a, and so, but he he have a chisel and he'd hit it a couple of times, nothing to the granite, and he'd look at the chisel as dent. So they found out about this. So Mark Lehner, hmm, American Egyptologist, well, close friends with Zahi Was, who uh, started out originally, I'll give a whole story of him, with ARE, trying to support casing material. Then he got his PhD and he turned totally against that after they paid for his doctorate. And he became the American Egyptologist and traditional theorist. So how he explained this, with an honest face, he said they would have a thousand chisels, lined up, men lined up with chisels. And one guy would go bang, 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 no good, give me another one, bang, 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 give me another one, a thousand lined up. And he says this with a straight face on television, PBS. And expects are using to hammers, so they said the Egyptians used the hammers. Exactly. They are uh, calling gods, so they call the knitter gods. And then in the Middle Ages and the beginning of the 18th, 19th century, the early British and French, they put their own background also because their technology was very simple at the time, so they couldn't imagine that there is other technology can do this. So they stuck with the primitive tools. But nowadays we may have better chance that we have higher technology, but because of that technology we have, we feel how difficult to do this with our technology nowadays. That's why I, can, I say if we Egyptologists will uh, try to uh, explain it again, mm. to refix this, I think they're going to come out with better stories. 21st century explanation. Mm -hmm. yes. There's one exception to your rule. That was the father of modern Egyptology, was Sir William, Flinders, Sir William Matthew Flinders Petrie. Son of an engineer, he was a surveyor. He was honest enough in the 1880s with the technology of his day say, we don't know how they did this. We don't know how they did this. Go. Okay. This is what's known as a granite ashlar. It's broken, obviously broken off. This is one of the things Chris Dunn immediately came to. Uh, he had had another one that's sort of it was like a couch that he put in his first book, and I thought he meant this one. So we're on the plateau one day and we're walking, and I said, I'm going to your, your finished stone. He said, no, you're not. You're going the wrong way. And he, I came to this, oh, this one is better than the one he had. It's a perfect radius, perfect radius, all the way down. All the way, he may, he's measured this completely, never deviates. But what's interesting to understand about this, this is just a piece. 
What you have here is a granite wall. I mean, a limestone wall. This is a limestone bedroom. Look at these stones, some 200 tons, at least. Look at the erosion. This is very, very old. This is where Robert Schock came, and he said this erosion could be 100,000 years old. This is very, very old. So what we had, this is very ancient, and it got so eroded, then they cut granite, and they placed the granite over it, because we know that this had covered this. And these are just pieces. So this was, and this is upside down. We have one in the front there that's right side up, that has perfect flat top. So this whole wall was covered with this granite, and we think this is the cataclysm that knocked it off. And also, the, the interior is granite, is, yes. The yes. core is limestone, the yes. exterior is granite, yes. so you have two materials. Exactly. Again, these, it's not like these were like simply put on, they had to interlock. Right. The same as the pyramids, and the amount of effort that would take to custom fit. This is in the Valley Temple, you're looking at pink as one granite. This is the beginning of this stone, goes around the corner. If you look up there, you see the circle? You see the circle? Yeah. And the Egyptian door, Anthony, used to be locked up, not to the All side. The, the look was going up. Right. Around the corner. And that's where the hole is. Wow. You see the circular hole up there, Brian? And this is the joinery. Just like we see in the Coricancha in Peru. You're talking technically a perfect fit. Look at that.